Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, everybody. Great movie. What a movie. Uh, please welcome Tom Sturton, star and co-writer, and co-writer Tom Palmer. Thank you. <coughs> Hello. Thanks so much for coming, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is a big crowd. This is great. Give them another round of applause. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this this movie uh, captures a feeling that I have all all the time. <laughs> um, I'm curious by a round of of put your hand up. How many people in the audience feel like the way this movie feels most of the time? Okay. It's okay yeah. if you're normal and you don't. It's okay if you crazy. don't, but you're crazy if you don't feel like it all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, how did you arrive? Like, how did you arrive at that? Uh, wanting to make a movie that feels the way this movie feels. Yeah, well, well, it, there was there was a, an anic. I mean, um, I I once went to a wedding, um, and I hadn't had much sleep, and um, I, I I had drifted apart from the. Uh, I gotta stop telling this story because the people who had the wedding are gonna find out and be very offended. But <laughs> there, there, are these, there are these friends that I drifted apart from, yeah. similar to Pete. And I was a bit paranoid during the course of the day in the wedding that um, I'd been invited as a joke, and uh, that this was gonna be like a big reveal at the end, and they, the groom was gonna turn around and say, "Tom thinks he's genuinely been invited to this. Isn't that funny?" Um, and that's obviously an, an enormously narcissistic thing to be thinking at someone else's wedding. But um, <laughs> uh, to Tom, Tom pointed that out to me. Uh. And I gave myself for it. And we, we thought it'd be a funny premise uh, or an yeah. interesting premise. It was just something, because I think, you know, obviously part of me was thinking, yeah, that's very narcissistic um, and how funny that you could make an entire wedding about you. Um, but equally, it's an absolutely terrifying idea, the idea that maybe there will be this one day where that feeling actually comes true and like all your friends do actually hate you and all the things you're worried about do actually happen. Um, and so we just wanted to kind of try and capture that feeling and just sort of chase it and like, you know, write a story around it. Well, yeah, so when, when we wrote the script and we um, uh, passed it around for, you know, just for friends and agents and colleagues to read, what was really interesting is this that everyone who read it said, you know, that really captures something that I feel or that that reminds me of a weekend that I had once or um, or one guy was like, oh, that makes me want to discuss something that happened the other day when I thought you were offended by something that I had said and then like and so on. So we just knew we like captured something that we all share um, and that really drove us on to, to make it. Yeah, that scene where um, Archie is suddenly like so vulnerable uh, is such a great like turn and and um yeah, I think kind of digs to the heart of that feeling. Um, I wanted to ask about the the tone of the movie. I think it's really interesting that um, the movie is being sort of, it's presented as a horror movie. You kind of sit down, you feel like you're watching a horror movie kind of the whole time and you're sort of waiting for this release and it never comes. And, and I, it just does, well, it, it comes in a different way, but there's no one gets their head blown off with a, you know, shotgun. Um, uh, yeah, uh, how did you kind of arrive on that uh, tightrope walk of, of a tone? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the key was to, was to never have that release because I think that reflects better what that, what that feeling is, you know, that anxiety, like if only there was a moment where someone could say, don't worry, yeah. it's all fine. But then the more someone says that, the more you're like, hang on, maybe you're in on it, you know. Um, so it was about keeping it kind of framed as a horror, paced as a horror, um, lots of shots were shot, you know, as though they were horror films, but obviously peppering all of that with, with comedy just to like permanently wrong foot the viewer and like just juxtapose, you know, very, very dark music with something as trivial and funny as putting on buttons or like <laughs> very kind of light music with something as dark as like shooting birds. Um, so it was always about like juxtaposing um, elements of the film to just unsettle the audience. But it, it is weird that, that it's funny to watch people be horrible to each other. I don't, <laughs> I don't really understand that. Um, I mean, I find it very funny. It, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting part of uh, human nature, I guess. Um, I mean, a big influence, one of the big influences of, uh, for the film was um, 
meet the parents, which is obviously a very broad <laughs> yeah. comedy. But you know, if, if it was played like a drama, it would probably be kind of a horror film. You know, this this poor guy is just totally like, bullied by his parents-in-law. Um, so yeah, it, it felt it felt like it was um, it was fun to play with the stakes of uh, of a horror film, but as Tom says, mixed with a kind of uh, comic comedy of manners yeah. kind of thing. Um, so you guys have collaborated for a really long time and I, I read that you had like stage work that you did. Could you just kind of tell us about like your journey to this, your first feature and, and what some of your earlier work was like? And, and I'm curious if there's continuity in terms of the subject matter and that kind of stuff. Maybe. I mean, we, yeah. So we, we started out as a live sketch comedy duo, um, at the Edinburgh festival and things like that. Um, and then, the first thing we made um, was uh, was like just a YouTube mockumentary um, about a, a very sad student who tries to put on a big techno night um, and it all, no one turns up, basically. <laughs> um, so they are kind of like, um, I guess there's some continuity of those themes of like a slightly deluded character who's, you know, um, trying to sort of break free from their, um, you know, upper class kind of, identity and try to be something different um but sort of just failing and putting their foot in stuff um but but yeah between that and and this film it was just it was live comedy and 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 sort of writing treatments and pitches for tv and and this film was almost came out of frustration of just wanting to 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 create something that we could kind of make ourselves to some extent and have some ownership over and and really have that kind of link between screenplay to screen and and um and make sure it actually you know actually happened this time yeah a, a lot of what sort of drove the setup was just the practicalities of, of trying to come up with a film that we could you know when push came to shove just at the very least film ourselves with some mates on a yeah night totally night, you know? and it was like well how do we set a film in a house um with 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 a bunch of guys you know um how do we make that interesting and, and in a weird way the kind of uh the limitation, the practical limitations of that actually helped kind of focus the uh, the narrative, I guess. And, and yeah. That's the best, that's great. Um, how did you put this cast together? Like, are, were there people that you've collaborated with before? Were there people that were, that were new to you that you found through casting process? Um, apparently this mic isn't working. Uh, the casting was, um, it was I mean, we, we used a casting director um is the short answer but that's not an interesting answer um we uh <laughs> some of them were our, some of them we knew on the circuit there are some sort of comedians that we knew already um graham for example played archie um yeah we we we, we were really lucky basically and, and and it was a great casting director and and um we just got uh i think the director pulled in a good a good bunch of names that were willing to tape you know for a totally unknown project cool. yeah but there were there's definitely a few um yeah sort of twists in the casting process i mean george the guy who owns the house w we'd written as more of a kind of slick suave kind of chic guy that that we you know was meant to be a quite unlikable but then this guy josh mcguire comes into the audition room and, and he just delivered this really kind of almost you know friendly interpretation of the character and and suddenly we realized how important it was for pete to have this believable ally that like really he could find some solace in every now and then over the weekend and and a reason to actually catch up with him um and similarly graham who plays archie we'd we'd sort of imagined as a more of a sort of like um sort of less of a jock like looking character um and then when we saw his casting tape for the breakdown scene. There's just something so funny about seeing someone quite handsome and jockish just like totally break down and reveal himself to be the like young, vulnerable boy that he is inside. Yeah, I mean, the, the main character description for him was increasingly sweaty. Um, so, um, he, he nailed that in the audition as well. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that really came through. I think the sweat really came through. Um, let's take some questions from the audience. Yes. Okay, the, the question, and I'm curious if you're gonna answer it, is do you think Pete's friends genuinely hate him or are they just playing a trick on him the whole time? Um, 
<laughs> for you to decide. Um, I think I, I think hopefully there's there's truth in in both those things. I mean, I really would love people to. Um, you know, talk about this for hours, whether <laughs> like whether whether you're on Pete's side or the friend's side, who Harry really was, was he really plank? Was it like, I, I want people to feel unsettled and to continue like pulling on, on the threads of the narratives that are in there, like Pete and and kind of never find an end to them because that's sort of the feeling we wanted to, <laughs> to create. So I'm sorry, that's probably a dissatisfying answer. <laughs> the, the question is, um, uh, it, the, the film strikes such a specific, so many specific notes. How did you retain uh, creative ownership over the project through the process of, of executing the movie? Uh, well, I mean, uh, again, well, just because you produced it, but uh, um, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, the long, the long story is that there, that there was kind of, we sort of made it in collaboration with, a, with a, a, another producer um and for reasons i won't go into that guy sort of let us down um and um and kind of pulled out very last minute and so almost by accident we were suddenly making this film ourselves and your your point is very well made because what what we found in the in the edit was you know andrew the director and and both of us the writers kind of looking for the person we were meant to like receive notes from and then realizing it was just us uh, and that being incredibly satisfying and the only way we could justify like not paying Andrew or ourselves anything was that this was a very very unique and free moment where we had no one to answer to um, and it was all down to us um, and and the same goes for like yeah the score the people who did the score they're friends of ours um, mm. uh, yeah we sort of just yeah we had help all along the way with 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 people that were just doing doing it for the for the love of the of the project so that really hopefully pays off the question is um how much were you thinking about the genre of these movies that are about like a group of friends getting together and spending a weekend together like the big chill uh yeah yeah uh, i mean um, uh, someone described the film as like evil richard curtis um which I think is is good. I mean, we we definitely were drawing on a kind of. I know Big Chill is is a, is a American, but a, a, a tradition like like Peter's Friends, sort of a traditional film like that, that a traditional British uh, drama, and it was just fun to kind of subvert those those tropes, basically, um, and kind of present posh English characters that aren't charming and bumbling, but you know horrible or kind of useless and um and uh, have breakdowns um but yeah i think we were definitely conscious of those films we also also drew on stuff like force majeure and um you know festen those kinds of european films where they're, they're just to really get into that awkwardness and aren't afraid to kind of play a scene out um but yeah, what 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 do you yeah, think? Yeah, no, that, I, I think uh, that that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The question is, um, do you feel like this is a movie that you only could have made in your 30s because it addresses uh, the kind of millennial anxieties, and then also, um, how does your your the moment that you're at in your lives right now? How did it inform the creation of the movie? Yeah, well, I it thirty. I, I mean, are you thirty? I mean, yeah. It's it's. Uh, I don't know if you can, but um, yeah, it just seems like a unique time turning thirty, and especially when you're reuniting with friends, and there seems to be a pressure to kind of compare where your lives are at, and you know, what's your job? Do you have a family? You know, where's your life really at? Have you, have you met certain kind of goals you had? So I do think, yeah, you're absolutely right. Basically, I think it is a, a unique. A uniquely pressured time that felt good to explore for this story. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I see a question like way in the back there. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I guess I would agree that there's definitely uh, an emotional repression that is kind of um, unique to the British psyche that means that, um, yeah making jokes is often a way of bonding uh being cruel to each other um and that 
yeah, people don't really talk about being vulnerable much and therefore I think can kind of like, you know, work themselves into the way that, into the sort of state that, that Pete gets. Um, so yeah, as Tom said, you know, it is meant to be sort of drawing on that sort of like English witticism, but, but with, a, but with a kind of mean twist just to, just to kind of s spin you out. And, um, yeah, I wonder what the American version would be like. Well, no, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure there are examples, but um, yeah, I think it's probably probably a good point. Yeah, but but it, but it it still still seems universal as well. I I I guess so. It's sort of both. Mm. Um, yeah. There actually is an American version of it. Just really? out. Just out. Oh no. Studio six sixty six. All right, I see that. Okay, cool. The, there is, Sorry? Weekend at Bernie's and the Foo Fighters movies are the American versions of the film that we all just saw. Yeah. Um, what did you learn about yourselves as you created these characters? Well, I think, I mean, I'm pretty similar to the, I think I'm pretty sim. I'm, I, yeah. I, um, <laughs> Well, I, maybe uh, hopefully the film uh, it is a, is a good way that we can all not do that, I guess, or feel better about ourselves a little bit. Um, so maybe uh, maybe maybe the film taught me to to take a joke for once. I don't know, um, Tom. Yeah, um, it's a good question. I, th I I do genuinely think I don't know if it's to do with the film or the age one gets to, but. I do think more and more I do try and nip those feelings in, in the bud every now and then and just be like, oh, by the way, so did I offend you when I said that thing? Because I'm sorry, maybe it was a bit offensive. And then maybe that person's like, yeah, a little bit, but it's fine. And then, and then it's just done rather than like, you know, brewing over it for like a whole weekend and then ending up like his character. Um, so maybe, maybe to that extent, yeah, it's, it's helped on some front. Okay, anybody else? We have time for three more. Yep. The question is, uh, what was the process of uh, thinking about class and the way that the film addresses class in in the in the script? Um, so you repeat, repeat that one more time. Um, it's uh, talk about how the the movie is in conversation with like class, yeah. like an Eng English class structure and and the wealthy class. Yeah, well, I think we didn't want to. I mean. It's just it was just felt like really rich comedic territory to to watch someone in trying to deny who they were basically someone who was who had a serious case of class guilt, um, and we felt like it was interesting that Archie who who is sort of you know obnoxious and and horrible in many ways is is oddly or at least I find oddly more watchable at times than Pete because at least he is authentic at least he kind of owns his. Um, his background, you know, and and doesn't pretend to be something he's not. So I think we, we were interested in that kind of question of 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 to what extent is it kind of beneficial to to try and distance yourself from your class uh, and try and be something you're not. And and actually, are there times when it's better to just own it and and is life a bit easier that way? Um, yeah. So do you wanna... Yeah. Well, just just to say, I mean, it, by example, I think you know, Pete. Pete would like to think of himself as the guy who's going to get on with the gamekeeper the best because he's, you know, aware of class and he's, you know, he's he distanced himself from the reprobate behavior at university. But actually, Archie seems to get on with that guy great. But Pete, because he's sort of so fake, actually just ends up offending him and sort of saying the wrong thing and putting his foot in it. Um, and, and that kind of, that sort of squirming, lack of identity was something that just interested us okay we got time for two more yep the question is to talk um about the opening scene with the dog and uh where that came from and how you pull it off yeah shout out to my cousin for running up that hill uh in those clothes um it was exactly that to get an adrenaline shot in the in the you know it was about trying to keep things interesting in a film that is sort of about you know depends a lot on all those awkward silences and all of that stuff we felt like that it needed a an injection of adrenaline at that point and we wanted something to happen to him on the way that kind of was just odd and that set this tone of like okay 
there's something just there's something just weird about this film there's something weird about the, the time that this guy's about to have um yeah but the dog was the dog well but the, the yeah. guy the guy promised that the dog would do lots of things that it wouldn't i think um yeah and uh it, it, yeah i think the, the, the dog got its barking out in the first like 10 minutes and then just refused to bark again but um but i think we got enough footage and then the car was just i mean we just sat down the kind of production team we were like we need a broken down car um and we need it to be there and covered in mud and just about roadworthy and the guys you know the production assistants they just called up scrap yards found some place where they're like yeah we're about to scrap this car and i think we paid them 150 pounds to deliver it and pick it up um and and that was it and so like suddenly we had this key prop that i'd never imagined how the hell we could we could get it but it was just a few phone calls and people just charming guys at scrapyards um so yeah it, but it was you're right it was a very very tricky one to shoot is that sound that the dog is making is that foley did you guys add that in post that's, <laughs> that's you yeah. Really? No, 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 okay. That's, that's, uh, that's, re that's really that the dog. dog. That's the dog's making yeah, that yeah. noise. It's such an eerie sound. Okay, last question. Um, whose idea was the recurring motif of dogs in the movie? Which of the two of you had that idea? <laughs> well, I think we... I'm, pl I'm pl still saying please you notice that, but also annoyed that we didn't think of a, an answer for this when we wrote it. I mean, uh, uh, what, what, um, I think when we came up with a story of the, the bullying of the girl with the dog. Uh, then it was about going back and finding ways of like planting that so that someone as observant as yourself would be like, oh right, there was, you could see how things were triggering Pete to, to, to build to that moment where he would think that that was the, the link with Harry. Um, but I don't think there was any deep symbolism I'm no. afraid with the with the. Uh, no, but there was, there was a very, um, a little, little trivia fact is the, uh, there's a painting, I don't know if you picked up on this, but this was just coincidence, but on the staircase there's a painting of a little girl holding this dog. And um, the, the, yeah, so when he's walking down the stairs, Tom gives it like a little look. And, and we thought maybe that's another thing that just like trigger, triggers him. Power for the, of the dog. Power yeah. of the dog. Yeah. Great movie. Um, yeah. All right, well, uh, this is a great movie. Everybody tell your friends and family to come see this movie and let's give them a round of applause here. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.